So today I'm just going to bone out a whole ribeye for scotch fillet. So to begin with, we need to remove this top cap here. So to start with, what I'll need to do is just find the seam that's just above the ribs and then slowly make my way along and underneath this muscle I'm holding now. So just being careful to follow this seam and not go too deep. There is two muscles underneath which make up the scotch and you don't want to go into those because the scotch will end up falling apart. Once this top cap's removed, it'll be trimmed out for sausages and mince trim. Now as an alternative to taking the top cap off, you can just simply bone these ribs off and then leave the cap on for a roast. That way it'll keep a lot more fat on your roast and it won't dry out as much, it'll have a lot more flavour. Now as I'm actually going to be cryovacking this scotch down for display in the window and for future slicing, I will be removing the cap. Now once it's removed, I can put it aside for trimming later. So you can see here along the ribs where I'm marking here is just roughly where the end of the tail sits. So to start boning it out, I'll flip up on its end here and I'll mark hard down along this chine bone. That'll make light work of when I go along the rib bones as my two cuts will join up and the scotch will fall off the bone. Just note that I'm marking hard up against the bone with the knife slightly angled towards the bone just to leave the least amount of meat on the bone. While I've got the ribeye sitting up like this, I'll just take off this paddy whack just to save having to come back to it once it's boned out. The paddy whack's a great little chew toy for your dogs. It takes them a little while to get through because it is quite tough and chewy. Okay, so now I can flip back around and I'm just gonna cut down along these rib bones now. So it'd be the same sort of technique as what I did on the actual chime bone, just hard up against those ribs, slightly angled towards the rib with the knife, just to try and minimize the amount of meat that's left on those bones at the end. You can see here I've started marking along those bones from the chuck end. Now the reason I've done that is because the angle of those rib bones actually falls that if I cut the other direction, my knife will want to jut into each rib, whereas this way it'll sort of skip and slide along rather than jutting in each time. Now as the ribs don't sit as a flat or straight surface, you do want to sort of make sure that you're sticking to those ribs and curving in and around as the bones do curve and sweep back in. You don't want to be cutting off the corner of your scotch by leaving it on the bones. So for trimming up your bones, you want to go up and down your ribs here and just remove those intercostal muscles. They'll all go into sausages or a burger. Once all the intercostal muscles are removed, you can go back over those bones and just clean them up a little bit more just to get as much meat as you can off so that can all go into sausages. So with the bones not being perfectly square like I mentioned, you will have to come back and cut on a different angle, just as you will have missed a little bit of meat on the inside as your knife obviously doesn't cover all angles in one cut. Alternatively, you could leave it at this point that it is now, cut it through on the bandsaw and use them to smoke for some stock bones, or if people are wanting to buy stock bones with a little bit of meat on them, you can leave them like so and sell those. So now when it comes to trimming up this scotch for prepping to actually cry back it down for a later use, I'll just shorten up this tail here. I won't shorten it up completely, I'll just trim it up so it's a bit neater in the actual cry back bag. And just make sure I'll just remove any of those little bits of loose fat or meat or bit of bark that's left on there. And as it is going in the cry back bag, I'll take my face cuts off now just to get rid of the dry outer edges and make the scotch nice and square. That way it'll be much more presentable in its cryback bag. So as you can see there, the scotch has come up really good, ready for cryovacking. Beautiful grass-fed beef. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to the like, subscribe and bell.